In this episode, I reveal the best decoy rigs and setups we use the most. From a simple layout blind field duck rig to a complex multi-species arctic goose rig and a few in between. Then, Mel and I take a group of hunters on a spring snow goose hunt and it was the biggest blobbing we have ever experienced. And yes, we ripped into the half mile by half mile flock. Even though they all came at once, it could have been worse. I'm Claudio Angaro, and I take people hunting. I woke up one day as a 27-year-old school teacher and said to myself, I'm going to build a hunting lodge. That was in 1994. Now I lead my dedicated team of guides for 63 days each fall, exposing my clients to some of the best waterfowl hunting of their lives. Controlled chaos, epic hunts across 5 million huntable acres. We are hired to hunt. After all these years of doing this, the, the one thing I figured out, and I learned a lot again just this spring, is it's all about the decoys. The spotting is a big deal, obviously, because without that, you don't get to be on the X, and, and that is, again, probably the biggest deal. But without decoys, and having a plethora available to you, I mean, our, our job wouldn't be near as easy as it is. With that being said, having access to decoys is a big thing. And, you know, I know I referred to in the past, you know, without, without the ammo, without the shotgun, or without the blinds and the decoys. I mean, it, it's all this complex web of equipment that Al has to form together to, to, you know, to make a hunt successful. And you could have all the decoys in the world, and if you don't know how to set them up, well, it, it doesn't do you much good. You know how to set them up and your spotting failed and the birds don't come back or you totally misinterpreted, the hunt's gonna be a failure. So you get nothing to shoot at, so then you don't really even need a gun or ammunition. Every successful hunt comes together from the culmination of all of these things that come together and create the perfect storm and you end up with a fantastic hunt with the birds doing it perfectly over the decoys and the guns working perfectly and the ammo killing and doing its part and the blinds doing their part. The decoys though are what funnel the birds and they're what cause the attraction and the birds to actually see them and line up their approach. So how do we do this? And there's so many different setups with flock composition, time of year, you know, the mood of the birds, are they hungry, are they not, are they being aggressive, uh, are they specks with snows, are there snows alone, are there snows with little candidates, are there mallards in there with the snow geese. Every situation is a little bit different. I'd like to go through some of the key setups that I found that we use and have refined, you know, over the last 25 or 28 years, and we've made a lot of mistakes, you know, I mean a lot of them. It's not always easy, you know, and, and I'm fortunate. I've got, you know, some of the best guides on the planet and they're so passionate about what they do and they, they strive for success. I'm very fortunate to have access to a bunch of decoys. I don't even know how many decoys I actually have. There's three or 4,000 silo socks, a thousand or more dive bomb silhouettes, a couple thousand full bodies, I don't say this to be boastful. I say this because as an outfitter in Alberta, there's so many different species to hunt and the flock compositions make it so that if you want to be successful, you have to have the certain type of decoy and the certain layout of decoy so the hunt can be a success. And we've had a lot of unsuccessful hunts, especially in the early years, even though we thought we were being successful, we look at that now and go, eh, that wasn't so good the bar wasn't where it is. I mean, when we started, the bar was down here. Now the bird hunting bar is up here. So what I'm getting at is I've invested heavily in decoys. As your average hunter, to go out there and, you know, spend 30 or 40 or $50,000 on decoys, it's a tough pill to swallow for getting after them three, four, five, six times a year. Ultimately, you, you have to pick your target species and go, all right, well, I'm going to target Canada's because that's what I have closest to home and 
that's what I like to hunt. Spend your money there. And then, you know, if you live in parts where there's lots of speckle bellies, you may want to spend your money on a speckle belly rig. Or, you know, if you're into hunting snow geese, sink some money into a bunch of snow geese. The other way of doing it is, is get your core group of friends and everybody has to contribute a little bit. And then it's not so bad, you know. So I, I would like to go through some of the different setups that we use. You'll hear Jason Modine, he'll always say the blind is number one or the hide is number one. That is the key fundamental there for sure. Focus on hiding, whether it's in A-frames or upright blinds or willow blinds or layout blinds like the Cabela's Renegade series layouts that we use or it's laying there in the white suits and you know I've adopted more and more white suits and we use them quite a bit now and I've you know I've developed some of the Snow's decoy wear where it seems to help us be a little bit more camouflaged ultimately you have to build your decoy rig around your hide and you select your hide and your decoy rig based on what you spotted and the flock composition that makes up the birds that you're hunting. There are a whole bunch of setups that we encounter that we have to use on, on any given season. I mean, it, it changes from September 1st to the end of October, but there's always about four typical setups and systems that we use. One is layout lines, shooting them straight on and that's ideal for Canada's and Mallards. I mean it just it's a classic setup we've been using it for years and it works. Oh my gosh. Shoot your lanes boys. <laughs> Roll them, roll them, roll them, roll them, roll them! Wait, wait. We better go, boys. Go, 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 go! Go, 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 go! Shoot, shoot! Rip them guys, they're right there, right there. Rip. Load up, load up. Whoa, nice shot, left side, reload. The other setup that we use is out of the upright lines. When we're hunting out of uprights, we're either shooting them straight on or off to the side. When we shoot them straight on, typically it's a little bit earlier in the season or when the birds haven't been pressured and confident that they'll approach the blind straight on. Kill those, kill those, shoot them. One more, one more. Go, 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 roll them, boy. Nice, 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 nice. Kill them all, guys, shoot them all, shoot them all. Go boys. Go boys. The only time we wouldn't do that is if we have the wind at our back and the sun at our back because you don't want the big shadow from that blind in the morning or late in the evening being cast right into that hole. So we switch over in that instance to a side shoot where the, the birds will be actually approaching from the downwind, which would be either to the left or to the right of the blind. Later in the season, some of those birds, they don't want to approach that blind straight on. Go guys. Ducks like to go around multiple times, so if you can't get them to finish that first time, 
they go vertical, not because they're scared of the blind, they just got to get out of the way of it. And once they've seen that once or twice, you might not get a clean shot at them. So side shooting those ducks is always a good option if you've got a good steady oh, wind. Boys. Oh. Later in the season, the side shoot from the upright blinds works out really well because they're not seeing anything on that straight on approach. So you can have a bunch of decoys out to the side and out in front of the blind and you're actually downwind and a little bit to the side. And as the birds approach, they're looking straight on and the blind's off to the side. And without having that depth perception, they just come drifting right in and you get to shoot them you know, from the side approach. That works really well on all species. You just have to have that consistent wind and you know that that approach path is gonna stay consistent. You may have to compensate a little bit if the wind's changing throughout the morning or the evening. As the birds become more and more weary in the season or if there's a lot of hunting pressure in your area, you can be further downwind and to the side, especially on windy days. Those birds will come in and they'll approach low, they'll be bucking the wind, and as they see the decoys, they'll start to climb up. That could happen 40 yards back, 60 yards back, 80 yards back, and you need to put that blind somewhere along that travel route, 20 yards off that path, so before they start to climb up, you can get a shot at them. Works very, very, very well. And on unpressured birds, you can just get off to the side to avoid getting sun in your eyes or that shadow. Very, very important to keep that shadow out of the hole. The other, the other hunting system that we use is, is our big snow goose rig. And I've developed a little bit of a system there that, that seems to work, especially when you're dealing with multiple species coming into that same snow goose rig. Well, the snow goose rig I like to put out, there's a big heavy feed band up at the top and a short leg on one side and a really big long, long leg going downwind on the other side. But I've also put a point in there and that point does a couple things. I mean, you could have that point as a complete feed band and have those birds, you know, kind of fly over that feed band. But what I found is that the ducks especially will hit that feed band and go vertical. So when you're dealing with snow geese and ducks, it becomes a little bit more problematic. So what I did is I chopped that feed band in half, turned it into a point. Now if those ducks get a little skittish, rather than go vertical, they just slide around that feed band and they fall right into the hole. Now, the other thing that point does is if the wind starts to veer, that point actually becomes a downwind leg and you can move one of the other legs out of the way and the entire rest of that leg just becomes out of play and that seems to work. So it's almost like two or three goose rigs in one depending on a wind change. You may at times have to make small adjustments but if you have a wind change with 11 or 1200 or 1800 decoys and it's not in your favor it gets very very complicated very very fast and the worst thing you can do is sit there and wish for those birds to fall into the hole. Once the first flight doesn't do it, second flight doesn't do it, by the time that third flight doesn't do it, you better start moving decoys, and with every adjustment you make, you'll see that there'll be a correction, and the birds will correct. If your hide is good, they should fall right into where they're supposed to be. 10 or 12, low on the right, it's perfect. Let's get ready, guys, get ready. Let them come, let them come, let them come. Let them finish in the hole. Roll them, roll them, roll them They're right there. Beautiful shooting, guys, beautiful. They slid a little bit on the right, nice shooting. The other thing we do with the big snow goose rig is we can target the speckle bellies. We have a lot of specks and snows that mix and little canadas that mix. So what we'll do is we'll line the inside of the hole and possibly even one of the legs with a bunch of speckle belly decoys. That does two things. The white rig shows up really big. The snows and the specks have been feeding together. It funnels the snows in. <laughs> rolling, guys, rolling. 
we can get those darts to finish inside the hole because the hole's been lined with those either Wind Canada full bodies or dive bomb silhouettes work very, very well inside the hole. They're fast, they're easy, and they'll give the specs and the Canadas and the ducks for that matter confidence when you have that big goose rig out there. Kill him! The big Canadas tend not to like the big rig where we are here in Alberta, but definitely the ducks, the little Canadas, and the specs will target that rig. You should be able to get them to finish in the hole. Kill him guys, kill him right in front. Get them all, get them all, there you go. So no one likes putting out 1800 decoys. And you know, I remember when I started outfitting, there were some guys doing it and I went, man, if I have to do that, I quit. And you know, when you really look at all of the effort and the gear and the equipment and the time you put into that hunt, What's another hour of setting up decoys? I mean, you know, you've gone spotting for three days, you've been driving around, you find a hunt. <laughs> That's what we're looking for. <laughs> you got permission, you babysit it, you go home, you, you get up at three o'clock, you go on a two or three hours sleep, you're all jacked up on a hundred bucks worth of coffee and rock stars. What's wrong with spending another hour to put out a bunch of decoys? Now, if you don't have the decoys, that's another story. But if you have them, you got to get them out there. Well, <laughs> it was a tough one, man. <laughs> well, you know, all you can really do in the outfitting business is, is put guys on the X. And, you know, we knew we had 12 to 15 here last night. The other guys had 12 to 15. They ended up with 40 something. We ended up with 25, but it's not that they didn't come. I mean, how many were in that first flock? Oh, 40,000 for sure. It was unbelievable. Yeah, it was, we, we got blobbed. I mean, you know, and, and part of it was, I mean, I'm not, we don't like making excuses for sure. I mean, definitely, I think there's a couple factors that play. I mean, we had zero wind. Watch your toes, watch your toes. But we also have a situation where the, it's been really cold, it's frozen, so all these birds are jammed into parts of the roost. And it reminds me on those calm, clear mornings when they're all sitting on a roost with no wind. Yeah. And when they come, they all come at once. And when they came today, like, <laughs> well, we both, I've set up hundreds of these rigs. Yeah. Watch your head. And I, I thought, oh my God, there's 20,000 coming. Mel goes, no. There's way more than 20,000. I mean, they did it. We killed, what, 11, you said, the first yeah, flight? Yeah, the first flight. And then but was, we had, well, we had a wall. An was absolute a wall. half mile wall, yeah. dark wall of birds over. By half a mile wide. It was pretty it was, spectacular. It was, it was spectacular. There's something really weird going on here. We've never had this many birds stack up. And I think what happened is we had the migration go past us and then we had some really, really cold weather and we think they got yeah. pushed back because yeah. you could see them coming ahead of the storm, coming back. And then there's the big storm in the south in the Dakotas. And I think what happened there is those ones blew out of there and came ahead. Pushed and everything together, trapped. yeah. And it, it's pretty rare. And you know what? I mean, I, I'm not really liking it because now these birds are going around looking for 30,000, 40,000 yeah. blobs. And, you know, I mean, we, we really specialize or like to see those five to 10, 12,000 bird hunts where they're coming in just like Canada's. They come once, they come twice. You yeah. get underneath them the third time and they're conditioned in, in, in to go in there and they're conditioned in, in to seeing so many birds. So, I mean, I think we've been a little bit spoiled in the past and today yeah. was a little bit humbling, you know? Well, we had too many birds, far yeah. too many. Yeah. But yeah. Oh, well, could have been worse as I always say. <laughs> Still good, you know, every hunt's a little different. You know, do you have to go kill 200 or 150? I mean, these guys had an 80 bird hunt, 80. 109 yesterday, yeah. and a 25. The other group did a 
136, a 51, and a 40. So, yeah, I mean, so they're even, like pretty, two, pretty 200, good 200 birds a group kind pretty, of thing, and yeah, pretty equal hunting. And I, I tell guys like this was definitely 25 birds was our weakest hunt since oh. we started. You know, we've we've done 250s, 200s, but realistically, if you, we can go between 50 and 150. Yeah, on a three yeah. day or 120 in there you know everybody's happy we're certainly happy yeah but anyways yeah i've never i've never guided one this this small but I'll, I'll guide I, another one i, I have in the fall will, but, but you know, you know. Yeah. anyways happens we're gonna take some pictures it's uh saturday we've had a long week and uh i've got a group that has to be on their private plane real quick so we're gonna wrap this up and i'm gonna go back real quick and that's a wrap sounds good thanks Bill. you bet it was fun thank you you know some days that's just the way it uh, way it goes, you know. I mean, I get a I get a race back early. We're just about done packing up. I got a group that's flying private plane today, so I got to get get back there and get them out the door. But you know, it was. Uh, I mean, I've been on a lot of these, and to have I don't know, twenty, thirty, forty thousand. I don't even know what it was. You know, come in and, and they did it. I mean, you got to go with those first fifteen targets that are in front of you. There's no point in letting them roll. You're just exposing more to gunfire, you know. And, and we cut into them, and, and then they wheeled, and they went down about a mile away from us, and then that was it. You know, they just, everything that came over us, for the most part, just, you know, they, they heard that gob over there, and then they'd get up and wheel, and they just, it was like a magnet sucked everything in there. Anyway, still lots of fun. You know, we shot 25 birds for five guys, and, you know, we go out and do that with specs, and we're absolutely ecstatic, you know, and... And uh, 25 birds still a fantastic hunt in, you know, in anyone's books. It just, you know, when you shoot 250, it pales in comparison, but uh, still a great day all around. And, and just seeing the sheer magnitude and having that experience of that many geese from, you know, a half mile wide by half to three quarters of a mile deep. And then, uh, and then having, you know, 15 yards off your toes to half a mile is pretty, pretty crazy. Pretty impressive. Anyways, good stuff. Cheers. That's all I have for you right now. I hope it helped.